Okay, as you last recall, we had just discovered that we would get far too much information showing on the screen if we went through and grabbed every single one of these methods had, that had source screen. So, um, we can easily get around that by simply doing a counter, which I've done up here, i equals zero, i plus one, and check, see if i is greater than two, then break out of the loop. That's a small talk way of breaking from a loop if you're used to that. Um, if you're used to the word break in other languages. Anyway, so I won't go into details about how long it took me to figure out what to do for the next step, but it finally dawned on me that um, we were looking for something called comment. Or, or perhaps we were looking for something called comment. So I um, actually did a search. Remember, you can right click on a word and bring up a search for selectors containing it, which will look for any and all method names with the word comment. And sure enough, here we go. So uh, let's see. What are we looking for? We're looking for something. Comments. Well, that's not really a method. Comments at. Answer a string representing the first comment. And nah, that's not quite what we want, but it's closed. Comments in. Return the comments as a collection of strings in source string. That sounds good. Where do we get that from? What class object calls that? Okay, it's in behavior. Comments on. Hmm. Well, uh, I happen to know, and I'll re reconfirm it, that a behavior is the superclass of class. So we know how to get a class of an object. So in order to evoke this one method, comments in, we can just go ahead and call up the class of a certain object. But how do we do that? Because well, if you look at this thing again, what this returns inspected actually is a method reference. And I don't see a class. The closest thing I see is a method symbol and a class symbol. Hmm. Well, how are we going to get a class out of a class symbol? All right. Let's let's actually browse this thing method reference. Um, browse full. We're going to see actual, wait a minute, right there, actual class. All right, so we don't have to worry about the class symbol. We can just go with actual class. So let's see, it would be a method reference. What? And we know we're getting back a method reference right here. The first one is a method reference. So let's, let's check this. We go method reference first, actual. class. And what do we get? Hopefully we get the class. Well, it searches them all again. A color selector morph. Well, I believe that's what we determined before was what we were inspecting. Yeah, a color selector morph. Okay, so um, what can we get from a color selector morph? Well, we know we need um, the comments in, which requires source code. Say we need the source string. So where can we get the source string? Well, let's see. Uh, what sends this? What sends this uh, method comments in? Comments at. Mm, what sends comments at? Source code at selector. Oh, there we go. A source code at selector. So remember, we know a class 
is um, a kind of behavior and we know that if we send the method source code at selector we will actually be able to um, get the source code and pass it on to comments in. So in fact, let's try that. We're, um, we have it all up here, but I'm going to show the, the way to do it one step at a time. We're going to go my method what was that called? It's a method selector, isn't it? Something like that. Yeah, method reference. My method ref. Let's call it my method ref. Cone equals. We're just getting the first of them so we can work with it. And it's going to place that first one in this method ref. So let's go ahead and keep it down there. Now, what were we looking for? Actual class. Okay, actual class. And yeah, that's definitely a method selector. Now, what are we needing? We're needing um, the uh, comments in the source code for each method. Well, we know we're getting a method reference, so. Um, Let's see, what do we, uh, we go and we're getting a, a source code. Where do we get the source code from the method reference? Let's go back and inspect that again because I've forgotten. And look at our possibilities. Almost in variables, method symbol, class method. Comments in source string. Oops, that's not it. Method reference, actually. Or maybe it is. Let's see. Source code. Ah, huh? look. Actual class source code at method symbol. Okay, so we can just ask for the source code at method symbol. See, it's already doing it. So we could just ask for the method source code. We wouldn't even have to ask for this whole thing. So I was a little bit convoluted. So let's go ahead and use it. So it's method reference source code. Method reference source code. Method reference source code. code. And print it. And yeah, there we go. There's a bunch of source code. Okay, so we've pretty much got what we need. We know we're going to um, get the source code. We know we want um, the source code for um, this. We know we've gotten a method reference. We want the source code for that method reference. And we know we can call comments in to get all the comments within that source code. So let's try that. We would go my method ref actual class comments in yeah actual class comments in my reference source code is that going to get us what we need yeah there's there's um well, other than the misspelling okay so let's try it what, if, what happens if we do this? An ordered collection, a text for set. Uh huh. So that looks like it's actually going to be it. So what we would do is figure out how to put this in a loop. Well, we know if we go through and use the do method, we're going to get each method. So we don't have to have this thing of of um, a specific variable because it's going to be passed into our block. So all we have to do is um, type in, as we did up here, my nav system reference, 
default. That'll give us a default navigator. And then we can say, um, as we already did, MindMav, all methods with source do, and then we could just put parentheses around the method that we need. Or not parentheses, a, a block to create a code block. And we're going to be passing in a method reference. We're going to give it the variable each. That's what it's going to be passed in and called. And then we just say each. And if you notice, indeed, that's pretty much what I had figured out before with a slight um, abbreviation. Each string actual class comments in my reference source code. Actually, that should be in each also. And remember that we wanted to have a nice um, counter. So let's do it down here. And we wanted to uh, test for that counter to make sure that we weren't spewing out thousands of uh, answers. And uh, then we wrap it in a um, transcript show. Transcript show each actual garage return and this should show it don't forget we want to only go through the first 10 of them so and add a carriage return so it's formatted nicely and indeed if everything works right we're creating a navigator system navigation class um, setting a, a counter variable and we're saying for all of these uh, methods with the source string quotation, double quote, which means it has a comment, do for each of them um, set a counter, 1 through 10, and show. So let's bring up our transcript. It's right here. And if I didn't make any errors, which I often do, and yes, I did. Nothing more expected. So let's try that again. Let's go through one at a time to see where the uh, error took place. It wasn't the first two lines. Nothing more expected. So, aha. Uh -huh. Let's try it one more time. Searching. Okay. So it goes ahead and it gives us what looks like, yep. Now, with a little extra formatting, remember I had said in the last video that um, trying to put everything in uh, a string made it a little convoluted. So uh, let's just add each. Let's see if we can even make it shorter. Each association symbol. And let's try it again. Erase. Here we go. Uh, does not, okay. Associating comments in. It doesn't want to do that. I see. So let's see. Each as string. Ah, or we could just have it this way. Yeah, there we go. I'm betting that's the problem. This whole thing confused the parser. So we're going to pass it in an association comprised of these two bits and then add a carriage return after we pass it in. So let's try it one more time. Delete that erroneous output. Yeah, looks like we did it. Now, one more thing, I'm not going to go through it, but it turns out that there is a problem. Um, somehow there's a bug in here in this code where the
this uh, class comment thingy, that's what this is for, is actually being returned and it doesn't know anything about the message we're sending to it. So, um, we can skip it by adding a test. This may not be necessary with our new format, but I suspect it is. We add a test and we say if false. That way it'll skip everything that happens to look like a comment. So we'll say if false. And now, if we do it, it should work as before, but if we gave it a long enough uh, counter, it would skip all our comments and not cause a problem that I had before. So let's try it again. Search through everything. Yes. And sure enough, here we go. So that looks to be our complete uh, way of finding a list of all the text. And of course, if we needed to go in and, and find an individual bit of source code, we could go in and say, an ordered collection, first, second, third. I believe that's how you do it. Let's browse. Can an ordered collection answer first? An ordered collection is sequenceable collection. And uh, does it indeed handle fifth? It handles fifth, so it should handle first. Yes, first. So we could have gone ahead and gone through and gotten our ordered collection reference and gone through one step at a time and gotten each single line of comments. So there you have it. A kind of convoluted way of finding every comment for every method in the system. This code right here.